Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning and uh, welcome. I hope uh, your assignment went well. The on campus batch, online batch. Okay. Yeah, hopefully everyone has uh, submitted. So there'll be one more assignment. So two assignments in total for all the batches. Okay, so uh, that would be your last one. The second one will be the last one. And uh, I'll try and give it early so that you have enough and more time to complete it. So now getting into today's uh, subject, we'll pray first and then continue. Um, who would like to lead us? Travali? Since Mike is next to you. Let's pray. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for this time. Uh, we we are glad that we all gather together. We pray, God, that as we read your word, um, as Pastor Nancy is teaching your word, we pray, God, that uh, your wisdom will be flowing through her and uh, help us to learn and uh, uh, also practice what we are learning today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. So uh, till now, we have looked at some of the important aspects right as far as um, the word is concerned for us to apply and see the release of uh, greater power yeah, and greater demonstration of the supernatural um, so some basic things which we're all aware of is the word of god faith in the word of god uh, and um, uh, you know uh, the, the renewed mind so these are all basic things in the last class we discussed about anointing and we said that it is the power and the presence of the holy spirit that goes and does a work um, and uh, you know brings about deliverance healing so we talked about the anointing and some related subjects which are quite common these days things like you know impartation uh, how does impartation really work uh, and um, whether the person who is receiving the impartation will become exactly like the person who, uh, from whom they are seeking the impartation. So these were all some parallel questions that we asked. But one thing that all of us as believers can uh, be assured of is that all of us can flow in the anointing of God based on the grace and the calling that God has for us. Okay, And there are these levels of the anointing there are some people who are called into the offices and the anointing that they carry for example if you just take the prophetic anointing uh, there is a gradation you have the simple gift of prophecy then you know you have the uh, ministry gift of prophecy and then at the highest level you have the office of a prophet so somebody who's functioning in the office of a prophet carries another level of the prophetic anointing whereas a believer can also flow in the prophetic anointing but it's about the levels your understanding yeah so it's like that so anointing is something that all believers can flow in it generally flows in line with what god has called us to do and the more we practice the stronger uh, we find ourselves in that area. So that also is something we said, you know, you keep by faith, you keep taking the next step, right? And uh, uh, you keep using that grace and that anointing, you, you will find that uh, it functions uh, smoothly or it flows because Jesus said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water so the anointing will begin to flow when we we uh, move in it or if you want to use the term practice okay um, in that anointing you you start moving in that anointing so uh, should we should we move on to the next uh, subject here or any other thoughts about anointing i think we touched finally on the subject of unbelief and how it can stop the flow of the anointing so if there's unbelief no expectation then uh, even though god is all powerful and sovereign uh, unbelief has a way of stopping God. I mean, I, I say that with all due respect, but uh, that's what we see in scripture. Jesus couldn't do any miracles because people did not believe. And so we said it's good to help people um, get an understanding about the way God works and then minister. Then there'll be a 
a level of expectation among the people. So when we teach about um, gifts of the spirit, then people will expect to flow in the gifts of the spirit. But if you don't teach, there'll be no expectation. So that is another thing we can do to first equip them, to teach them. Then when they have an expectation or faith, then the anointing begins to flow in places where people are very expectant. You know, uh, we use the term hunger, hungering after God and all. We'll see more miracles taking place simply because faith is high, expectation is high. So that's a very nice environment for the anointing to flow. And, uh, uh, you know, that tells us that when we are working with people as leaders, we must help them, teach them the word, help them develop themselves in prayer, right? All these things, worship, what will all this do? Expectation, faith, it begins to rise. And then so many miracles take place or so much of the supernatural takes place. So this is what we covered. <clears throat> yes, yeah, sure. Oh yeah, Mike. So when we're talking about anointing, um, <clears throat> a lot of uh, ministers, um, as we see, they see that uh, suddenly they are shifting in that, uh, mm. uh, the phase of normally ministering or mm. may, maybe many healing ministers that we were we were reading about a lot of revivalists and all in the uh, yeah. history so there is a point where uh it just turns for them it's mm. like the anointing of the god is upon them in mm. a very higher level mm. that they and they don't see anything uh they don't see a like kind of what you say they pray and it happens uh so in this process of they seek for it they mm. seek for the anointing and uh, mm. all of that so i wanted to know sometimes i just like uh when we are seeking for the anointing mm. um how or with what intention do we seek mm. because oh, there yeah. is a yeah there is a That's fact a that yeah. uh, we all are created I mean, it might be a silly question, but we are, in fact, we all are created to worship God and have a relationship with God. That's mm. a priority. Mm. And also we have a purpose that we need to fulfill in the on this earth. Yes. So, And to fulfill that purpose, we need God's anointing upon our lives. Mm -hmm. So in the pursuit of anointing, mm -hmm. so how do we not lose the track of what is our, uh, you know, priority? And then, you know, having that, uh, what do you call it? conviction or peace in our heart that if I ask anointing also, it's okay. Mm. to ask it yeah 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 i hope i mean yes sense. yes i i'm understanding so um so you're saying that when we seek god and we seek the anointing yeah. okay um somewhere i are you talking about um you know we seek the anointing but that should not be that hunger should not be greater than our seeking god Okay. I feel a little guilty of asking for anointing sometimes. Like, okay. you know, okay, God, uh, and not, I, am I only like pursuing that, mm. pursuing you for that, mm. you know, pursuing you for anointing or seeing the supernatural? Yeah. You know, yeah. what I, sometimes it, I feel a little guilty to ask. Mm. No, it's like asking for the No, maybe you're not having the intention that you're asking God for maybe the but have. What is that uh, thought that mm. would really hinder in reaching Yeah. So um, if you recall, we touched on intimacy with God, okay, which is one of the keys to supernatural ministry. So it's part of intimacy with God should be pursued, um, you know, because we love God and though that kind of a motivation. It's not that I want to do ministry well, so I will be intimate with God. So that motive is what you're talking about. See, for us as believers, definitely we should not, we should firstly just love God. And as uh, John chapter 15 says that, uh, you know, when we are intimate with God, we will bear fruit. Jesus is the true vine. We are the branches. What, what do the branches do? They are the fruit bearing part of the vine. So just because we are connected to God, it will happen. The fruit will come. 
okay the anointing will be there the ministry will be powerful all those things will happen because of the by default because of the intimacy okay now seeking god only for the sake of the anointing and not a relationship you know that is problematic that is definitely problematic because um, that shows that you know we we just want our um, ministry to thrive or we just want a big name or you know like it's it's a very selfish motivation the motivation to only seek after the anointing for the sake of the ministry and not necessarily be intimate with god and love god okay so that is problematic but if the um i see i would say that there is a uh, if i may use the word direction okay when you say intimacy seeking god for intimacy and seeking god for anointing the direction is first you seek god for intimacy and then seek god for anointing that is correct but if you are seeking god for only anointing and for that sake you are you are seeking intimacy the other way that is that is not uh, correct often in ministry happens right when you get uh, you know i don't know if not with everybody mm. but there uh, might be areas where yeah so i heard this from somebody like um Yeah. So I heard this from somebody like, uh, okay, when don't be too much passionate about your ministry, and uh, if at all in your entire life you don't do anything also, but you have a relationship with God is enough. Okay, so I'm like, okay, if if that is that is the priority, but if that is enough, why we are even pursuing the other things? Why we why other things are even written in the Bible? Why mm. what is the that God asks us to go and do certain things and all of that? Mm. Mm. If mm. only the intimacy with God is enough, mm. and everything else is not a real big deal. Yeah. So why are we really pursuing everything else? We can just have a good relationship with God and. Uh, be there not doing anything also i mean this is one of the idea that i have heard around around yeah so see people uh, tend to err on the on the side of the extremes where uh, they might say you know all intimacy no need ministry that's problematic but on the other uh, extreme would be all ministry no intimacy that's problematic but what we are saying is what God says is somewhere in between, like John chapter fifteen verse sixteen. Um, it says, "You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give you." Okay. So, what does it say? It says it is God's design, God's desire that He has chosen us and appointed us to bear fruit. Bear fruit is what. you can say bear fruit is in terms of uh, you know being um, like a in character being like jesus that's also bear fruit but in ministry being fruitful is also bear fruit no so what does god want people are saying it's okay you don't need to really do ministry you can just be intimate with god but you see the connection there god is only saying that you will bear fruit if you're with me ministry has got to happen it's very much connected so to say okay only intimacy with god doesn't matter ministry doesn't matter is actually not biblical because ministry is associated with it being fruitful if you go back up in that chapter i'm only referring to one passage but i'm sure you can look up others as well but um verse 2 of uh, john 15 it says every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit so it gives us a clear picture of what god wants okay so ministry uh, is is very much connected to intimacy and uh, uh, you know god wants us to be fruitful okay now here's the other thing that i i personally i want to um, like how i look at it see intimacy with god um personal intimacy all that is there but even when we are doing ministry it's loving god right 
that's also loving god like why do i want to do ministry that's a big question because i love god i'm ready to serve like maybe god is saying okay you know you do powerpoint yeah that's ministry i love god so i'm doing powerpoint and whatever it is you know sometimes we have the uh, so very so called insignificant task put the chairs or sweep the floor everything is ministry it's an expression of our love to god that's how we should look at it now if i if i look at it separately okay then then comes the issue that oh when i'm preaching um, i'm loving god but when i'm doing something else i'm not no everything is actually kind of same in my heart what is it god gave me the opportunity to serve him and i want to do my best so that's also a part of being intimate with god but when we take it as something so separate right then we feel burdened then we make a demarcation okay intimacy with god ministry whereas they are supposed to be connected no it's it's your journey of loving god even when you're ministering you're loving god through the ministry yes yeah hmm okay okay <laughs> okay okay yeah yeah okay okay so nina is asking what if somebody says since everything is about loving god all ministry is about loving god what if somebody limits themselves to um you know something simple i'll pray for somebody or i'll put chairs but don't ask me to preach don't ask me to do see in a way it's disobedience because if god is calling us to other things that he has given us the grace to do in his kingdom and we are refusing we are saying no i can't or i won't um it's very unfortunate that's what i would say so if god is showing us open doors and he's saying come on you know i want you to step up it was it is going to be um a little scary but one of the things about in the supernatural and ministry in general is taking risks you have to step in and be obedient and let god do what he wants to do mm -hmm. so yeah i i would look at it as partial obedience or actually disobedience when we limit god yeah mic please ravi the others can you uh about the uh, baptism mm. uh, like a fresh baptism we call uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. that you need to be baptized again and again in the power of the holy spirit yes. and also which is the one kind of an anointing that comes upon you yes yes so i was reading the uh, about that in the scripture and mm -hmm. um good question yeah and i was i was just thinking that how do you no mm. i mean first of all how do we seek it i mean mm. okay i want to be baptized mm. Mm. um yeah we ask god because uh, speaking in tongues is one form of that you are baptized mm. which i already i'm done with it i'm mm. like i have got it and then when i am growing in this anointing or uh, i need a fresh baptism of the holy spirit, spirit. upon yeah. me yeah. and it's not one time but it is again and again and again mm. so um that's what an acts acts chapter 2 where uh, mm. jesus asked them to wait that you will you will be you know get power when you are baptized in the holy, holy spirit. spirit so that power comes upon us so mm. when we are asking or seeking for this baptism mm. and then okay maybe heavens didn't open or nothing supernatural happened around me for me to understand i am baptized mm -hmm. you know because i already speak in tongues mm -hmm. because there is no indication i don't know whether i am again baptized or mm -hmm. what is the intensity of baptism i received mm -hmm. from the holy spirit mm -hmm. the level of the anointing yeah so is it like when i ask and maybe god gave me mm -hmm. that uh, the fruit would be the indication of whether i am baptized again or not okay so um okay so couple of things uh, here ravli when we talk about um, baptism in the holy spirit as per acts chapter 2 um in every believer's journey there are two baptisms which we are called to one is baptism in water which is the baptism uh, of repentance uh, and baptism in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit 
Okay, every believer needs to do that because that is uh, that is what Jesus said in the Great Commission: Go into all the world, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Okay, so that is one thing. Second thing that Jesus said is. Uh, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So every believer should be Holy Spirit baptized. Only then we can do the work of the ministry with power. So coming to the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's uh, the first experience. Okay, The first experience uh, tells us that we are baptized. So if ever, even once, we have been baptized and we speak in tongues, we know that we are already baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's already been activated in us, everything. Okay. Now, what you're talking about, new anointing, fresh anointing. So uh, there is a passage, uh, Psalm 92 and verse 10, uh, which says, uh, But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Okay, fresh oil. So fresh oil is... Uh, usually we use that picture of oil for anointing, fresh anointing. We as believers, once we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we have received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Okay, We are not seeking the initiation of the baptism anymore. That's done. But what you're saying is there is something known as fresh oil. So we may receive a freshness of the <laughs> baptism each time. Okay. Now how to get it? How to get it? And uh, what else do you want to know? How do we know that we got it? Okay, fine. Hmm. Yes. Okay, okay, fine, fine. So I, I, as soon as I answer hers, I'll tell you. Um, so the thing here is how to get this fresh anointing. One is ask for it. Because we, we know that God gives that fresh anointing. Okay. So um, um, even that passage about the new wine, you can't hold new wine in old wine skin. So that shows us that as we are being changed and transformed by the word of God, um, we will be able to carry the newness that God is pouring out. Okay, and uh, I mean, we can talk so much about the Holy Spirit and you know how limitless and his power, how limitless that's why when you ask for more, it's possible, he can keep filling unto overflow. There's no limit actually. How much you desire that much, and even more than that, we can receive. So, ask for it, um, then uh, start moving. That, that's what we said when we are obedient, then the anointing will increase, right? Um, and um, uh, yeah, how to recognize it. See, when the recognition may come uh, early or it may come a little late. So how do we know it? First is by faith. You have to receive it by faith. That, okay, I've prayed, I've sought the Lord, and by faith, because like Romans 8, 16, it says the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the um, you know sons of God. So what we see there is, that the Holy Spirit plays a role of confirming to my spirit. So that's the first way we understand that we got it. Got it? But the evidence of the fact that we got it, we may see it, I don't know, we may see it immediately or a little later, uh, but you will notice by the things that are taking place. For example, you know, if it's a healing anointing and you feel in your spirit that, yeah, you prayed, you sought the Lord and God has done it. Right uh, now, when you start pe praying for people for healing, that first year itself, people may start getting healed. Or I've heard of some people who said, "Yeah, there were healings, but nothing any major healing." But maybe after two years or three years, suddenly some extraordinary things started happening. Right, so it will manifest. It may manifest quickly, or it may take some time, uh, and for that we need to persevere. So I think primarily by in your spirit, you have a sense. Uh, but through the manifestation, you can tell that, okay, fine, you know, it's happened. And that's what God wants. Okay, great. So um, uh, Anand, you're saying uh, Acts 2.38, uh, where Peter said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So your question is, is this order correct? 
first water baptism, then um, Holy Spirit baptism. Okay, so for that we have to examine the scriptures itself and see whether it has happened the other way. Like first uh, um, Holy Spirit baptism, then water baptism. Okay, so for that let's uh, go to Acts 10 verse 44 where Peter, he goes and preaches to uh, a Gentile, Cornelius and his household. So there, verse 44, it says, while Peter was still speaking these words, so he's just sharing the gospel. Nothing else has happened till now. He's sharing the gospel. The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Okay? So they were already baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now jump to verse 47. Now Peter says, can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Verse 48, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. So it shows us the order has changed. So in this particular incident, they were first baptized in the Holy Spirit and then they were baptized in water. So either is fine actually. So the normal is usually we say you, um, you know, you uh, proclaim your faith by being baptized in the in water. And then maybe they receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, but if it happens the other way, it's biblical only. There's no problem with that. Yeah. Sure. So, anything more about the anointing? I think, like, what comes to my mind is what uh, God told Moses. What do you have in your hand? Right? Yeah. So, whatever we have, in, in a spiritual sense, whatever gifts we have, whatever grace, use it. That's how, that's the best way to grow in the anointing. Just use it. Okay. And uh, God will show you how to take it forward. You learn how to, remember I said we become sensitive to the flow of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then we kind of understand what is God doing? Okay. What am I supposed to do? You kind of flow with it and you just become better and better. Yeah. Something like that. Mm. A uh, gap? Huh? Yes, yes, there is. It can happen. Like if we have, um, I mean, if you take the example of swimming, people say once you know swimming, you can always uh, swim. But I don't think that's true <laughs> from personal experience. <laughs> so, yeah. As a kid, I used to, but now I can't. <laughs> so once I uh, was just trying to, uh, you know, uh, really funny. So I, I was just trying to kind of recall and uh, be able to swim again. Someone's like, we are searching for something in the water. <laughs> because it took that kind of warming up <laughs> to be able to swim. <laughs> so I think similar. We think we can flow. We may be able to flow to some extent, but that flow is not um, yeah, the way it should be. So best not to disconnect. Yeah. <laughs> so keep using it. The more you the more you um, flow in it, the familiarity, the sensitivity, uh, the levels of anointing, everything begins to increase to whatever optimum God wants for us. So that also I shared in the last class, but I'm just breaking it down so that you understand further. Levels of anointing is something like, see, there's teaching anointing, right? So we may have a life group leader who teaches. Okay, or we may have, um, let's say, like me, faculty. I'm teaching, right? But then you have, you have, uh, you know, a pastor Ashish, and then you have a Joyce Meyer, and the the levels are so different. 
is the same anointing teaching anointing but also you see they worked hard to kind of um and that's another point exactly that's another point so when we receive a gift from god we have to discipline ourselves to to sort of work with it uh, right so when when you see somebody flowing at another level all together like you ask a question and then they give you four verses you know like the correct exact accurate answer they have uh, developed it they've developed the gift to that level and uh, they're flowing at another level and also it's connected to their calling right now we may look at a particular life group leader they may have a different maybe a marketplace calling but to a certain level they can teach so when i'm saying anointing has to increase anointing has to increase it will increase as for what i am called for i may not become a joyce meyer just telling like example okay i can become the best in like nancy anointing that i can okay but it's it's something different that joyce meyer is flowing in or some other preacher or minister is flowing in so those kind of things also we must keep in mind we can't keep telling god what god i thought i'll become like that and it's not happening <laughs> right so and work hard work hard i should not imitate okay <laughs> yeah no i know mm. nice so so much um, about the anointing <laughs> hmm so i'm thinking if i should get into the next uh, one or move to key 7 because we don't really have uh, enough time to get into um, yeah presence and glory there's a lot to discuss about presence and glory so uh, we can go to 7 7 yeah it's a shorter one so it's proclamation and action so proclamation and action simply means that when we act in line with uh, what has been declared then also the supernatural will be demonstrated so you know um uh, when jesus was healing people he gave instruction stretch your hand it's only when he stretched his hand that you know the leprosy had gone away or uh, go wash your um, eyes in the pool of siloam so they needed an action to be done for that person to receive jesus didn't say okay some places he said be healed and it was done but some places he said go do this so proclaiming and calling them for action also helps uh, and uh, for this we need to be led by the holy spirit and it's only when they do what we are telling them to do that the miracle happens the miracle occurs okay um so that's something to keep in mind and for this i think we need to develop ourselves in uh, hearing from god uh more of the prophetic anointing the word of knowledge word of wisdom uh, then when we know what god is speaking to us we can say do this or do it this way and then they receive a miracle okay so yeah it's it's quite straightforward proclamation in action yeah so even in church um something to practice as the holy spirit leads us when we after we let's say we preach then we we say right like okay can you just check can you check can you stretch can you do something that you were not able to do um what what does it mean it simply means have you taken action and if you have when people are doing that they experience the healing okay so it's okay to to kind of uh, say that when you feel holy spirit is telling you to tell them okay uh, some people take action but uh, <laughs> some don't and when you don't and nothing happens yeah hmm okay anand mic please ah uh.
I have a very strong sense in my spirit, mm. and I've asked, mm. and then no one responded. Oh yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so then what? What is your question? <laughs> then what we have to do? Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, see, if 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 in this in this classroom, mm. I've I've uh, I felt very strongly, and let's say Prince. Prince uh, received some healing, mm. but he is not telling it out. Mm. So the remaining people, what they'll think is not even not everyone. Like maybe Francis will think like this guy is playing chuma, uh -huh. <laughs> just just for seeking the attention and all. Yeah. If you think like that, what you what have to do? Yeah. See, when we call out um, words of knowledge, that acknowledgement may or may not come we teach that in our prophetic training see sometimes when you say a prophetic word something like um, you know god sees you he sees your hard work uh, um, you have served him faithfully god is going to bless you the person who's standing in front of you may have two kind of notable reactions one is they may cry and they may be so happy they may hug you like they like yeah, correct, correct. What you're saying is correct. Basically, they're acknowledging you, right? But the other reaction would be like this stand like a stone. Like, yeah. And that is the scary part because you're like, is it penetrating or not? <laughs> yeah. Am I am I saying it correct? But it happens. A lot of people don't give reactions or response. They may actually have received a miracle, but they don't tell us. Okay, but that is part of flowing in the prophetic. Uh, the only confirmation that I can have is, okay, I heard from God to the most accurate degree that I could. I presented it correctly. I believe something has happened. So there are times when we call out. We say, um, God is healing this. God is healing that. God is... At the end, we say, okay, if anyone has experienced something here, could you raise your hand? No hands. <laughs> uh, could you raise your hand? No hands. Like what Ravali said is correct. Okay, let's do the benediction. <laughs> but please, you can go home, check, and let us know later. Sometimes you just have to say that and you close. But it's amazing because later they'll come to you. Like just recently, I think two Sundays back, I was praying, uh, closing off the uh, service, and I got an impression like back pain. And I'm being very honest, okay? I thought, God, something more complicated you can tell, no. One back pain you're showing me. So I was like, no, no, it's just my imagination. Then uh, again and again, it's coming back like back pain, back pain. Then I just called it out. I said, okay, let me be obedient. I called it out. Okay, somebody here, God is healing you of your back pain. Uh, and then same thing, uh, you can let us know, no response, right? We closed off the service. Later, one person came to me and um, she's like, oh, thank you so much for calling out that back pain. Okay, and she had a story attached to it, but something had happened. And uh, because of that, she is in so much pain that um, even after medication, she can't sleep straight. Like she has to be on one side. And so she's not getting enough rest. Uh, and she said, I can't believe you called out back pain. That's exactly what I'm going through. So then... Um, yeah, like I just prayed with her. I told her, okay, let me know. She's better now. She actually came back. Like the last two weeks, she's coming back and she's saying, uh, it's almost gone. I'm I'm so fine, you know, and it's really God who has done this. So that way, people may not tell you at that time, but uh, yeah, you have to be strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> when we are uh, because we are talking about the hearing from god mm -hmm. um i felt certain times that uh, maybe we are going through the same thing mm -hmm. and people are attracted to us <laughs> we are going through this similar mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. uh, recently something happened uh, some girl was standing beside me i thought okay let me lay my hand on stand yeah. nicely so she started crying oh. like i was like oh god why she is crying i don't know why she is crying then uh, when I asked God, I got this word. Mm. And then I thought, let me just share this word. But that is the word which I am also going through something very similar. And uh, 
when i sh- when i said that word she started like more crying mm. and i thought okay mm. maybe god is talking to <laughs> so i'm why i said this is in the scenarios that um, then i went back and i thought thinking about it how i got that word um how do we differentiate mm. but in that case i know it's god mm. uh, yeah correct. i know it's god correct, uh, correct not just because she cried but i know it's god mm. uh, because when i asked what is she crying for the word just popped up mm. uh, and but i was little this that that the same thing i'm also going through yeah you get doubt sometimes like yeah, that i was like okay where is this mm. uh, little doubt i got anyways she got touched mm. but for my sake of my learning sake like mm. how do we yeah uh, does yeah. it happens like when we are going through something and we see a lot of people coming to us who are going through the similar things and Correct. asking us Correct. for uh, mm. prayer and instead i was like i wish i had an answer for you mm. because i'm also going through something similar, similar but i yeah. do have to pray for them correct 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 so does it happen like yeah yeah it happens um so how do we know whether it is from god it just goes back to um, you know like hearing from god making ourselves more sensitive to that so the more you are in the word the more you pray in the spirit the more you tune in to listen and act on it uh, the stronger your senses are i think i gave one scripture long back right hebrews 5:14 which says that you they have their senses exercised so with more and more exercise we can tell whether it is really from god okay uh, and uh, <coughs> yeah sometimes we can have a bias or a prejudice because we are going through something and you know we we carry that with us so i think also to be little conscious um uh, about it that okay i'm going through this right now uh, maybe regarding some certain matters right um whether to speak about it or something if you're finding it difficult you're going through something then just stay away from it but even after you've done all that if people come with the same situation it's definitely god because you're not trying to um you know push yourself uh, in that area but they themselves are coming then it's god then just minister to them there's no problem yeah and one more uh, thing that they usually say is the first thing that comes to you the first thing that comes to you is god uh, but when you dwell on it for long then the mind can start to play okay so always uh, in hearing from god in the prophetic we say that try to practice this receive the first thing that comes to you right and uh, then deliver that okay like i don't know how to explain it right now but it's like um, when we get a word for someone okay maybe the word is god is going to bless you so just say that you receive that and you say that be faithful to that word but what happens is the more we dwell on it we look at that person and maybe we we see them they don't have very good clothes or good shoes we then say god is going to bless you god will bless you with money god will bless you with a new job you know god is the money is coming in so all that is extra what did god say i will bless you that's the first thing to say that but uh, you know a pastor used to say this just receive that first thing and say it. don't add masala <laughs> so the remaining becomes you know like masala you add to it uh, that's problematic when we prophesy like that or we minister like that so but uh, we uh, prophetic uh, uh. we can scroll so thought as that when you get a word <clears throat> you press in more yeah, to yeah. give the details of that particular correct, word correct correct so that also adds right yeah. like for example you get a word and you uh, you want to know more details we can ask god mm-hmm. like okay tell me more about it god yeah more details correct. about it correct no for that only i began by saying first you practice this uh, like you know developing your spirit yeah exercising your senses so when you're working on that then pressing in makes sense but if you're not working on that psychology so we have to avoid those kind of just mental you know points <laughs> <laughs> huh. 
Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sometimes God, yes, yes, yeah, it works. So sometimes um, it it becomes clearer. You get additional information. That's true. But we need to know how to discern. That's what I'm saying. You know, it shouldn't be your mind. It has to be that genuine word from God. And I um, uh, really prefer it when God speaks at a time when you're not seeking that. OK? Uh, that's the best, because you're not premeditating. You're not premeditating. So it could just be like, I think I told you know, about that once, one sermon early morning I was reviewing, and my eyes started burning. You're not even thinking about praying for healing or anything. But that word of knowledge came at that time. And you know, somebody actually got healed because of that. So it's God. So at times when God, that's why all the time when you're tuned in, anytime God just speaks to you, he puts a word in your heart for somebody suddenly like that. That's the easiest. Because you know that you were not thinking about it, but you got a word. So you can practice that as well. Hmm. OK, so proclamation and action. <laughs> yeah, I have third year classes. Mm. Yeah, that's okay. We we still have uh, two more weeks. Yeah, but that third week. You'll be exams. I don't think so. Hmm? Only two classes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So I'll do that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the content, I'll um, have it pre-recorded. The questions we can take up in our live classes. I think that'll be better. OK? All right. Great. We have an idea now. So <laughs> uh, let's close. We'll pray and close. OK. Ravali, okay. Mike. She started, so that's why I wanted another person to do <laughs> Lord Jesus, oh God, we thank you for this time, God. We thank you for the all the teachings, oh Lord Father, all the insights, all the new things that you have taught us, oh Lord Father. And Lord, we ask you, God, help us, oh Lord Father, and uh, Teach us, O oh Lord Father, how to exercise, O oh Lord Father, how to bring, uh, how to implement all the things that you have taught us, O oh Lord Father. Holy Spirit, God, you guide us, O oh Lord Father, in, in the ways how we can bring them into actions and how we can do. And Lord, we ask, Lord, everything that we have taught today, O oh Lord Father, help us to remember, help us to carry them in our hearts and walk in your truth, O oh Lord Father, and walk in your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Prince. Thank you, everyone. God bless you and bye. Online batch, hope you're enjoying the classes or are you getting disoriented? Please let us know. Okay, Prabhu is saying it's fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.